Okay, isn't this cool? There's the, there's the pool. I probably don't want to go in there. This is neat. I'm just kicking back, sitting by the fire, just thinking about algebra. Honey, Susan and I were wondering if you could tell us how you define the domain of certain types of functions. Oh, that's my wife. She was wondering how to find the domain of certain types of functions. That's so funny she would ask that. Because why? when I sit here, <laughs> why is it funny, Beth? <laughs> it's funny because I'm going to film you. <laughs> oh, run! Okay. So, <laughs> anyhow, anywho, as my wife would say, let's look down here. It's so funny she would ask that, that it's not staged or anything. This is question 21 for your final exam review. Determine the domain of the function f of x equals x squared minus 9. Now, what you need to remember, this type of function, ooh, and that pen's not going to work very well. This type of function is referred to as a polynomial function. And whenever we have a polynomial function in algebra, the, po uh, the domain of the polynomial function is very easy. What can you put, what real numbers can you put into a polynomial? Anything. Now this is a little tricky because some students would look at this and say, hey, that's x plus 3x minus 3. What I say is, hey, it doesn't matter. If it's a polynomial function and I want to know the domain, the answer is it's all real numbers. And in interval notation, I would write that as negative infinity, comma, positive infinity. I'll bet you I can't get Beth to come back to give me another pen because she won't trust me. Let's see this next one. So anyhow, there's the easy one. Now, here's the next one. Suppose I give you the function f of x equals 3 divided by x minus 4. If you'll recall, this type of function is referred to as a rational function. Whenever I have a polynomial function in the numerator and another polynomial function in the denominator, <clears throat> that's referred to as rational. Mainly, to be honest, what I'm really interested in, the denominator needs to contain a variable. Now remember, back from arithmetic, the denominator can never become zero. So I would be in trouble in this particular problem if x was equal to 4. Because if I put a 4 into this function, the denominator would become 0. 3 divided by 0 would be meaningless. So x equals 4 is a problem. So my domain here is basically the set of all x's such that x cannot equal 4. So whenever you're trying to find the domain of a, a rational function, <coughs> the way you find the domain is you look at the denominator, and whatever makes the denominator become zero needs to get tossed out. Hello, doggies! Doggies! Hi, everybody! Okay. Now, here's our final question. Zeus, you can come up with Daddy if you want, but Daddy's trying to film right now. Hello, Zeusy! I love you! Okay, wait. Let Daddy do this. Here, come on up in Daddy's lap. Come on, hurry up. Okay, here's the last function. f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 5. Now, when you're trying to find the domain of a function that contains a radical, one of the most important things to do is to identify the index. Hey, there's you, sir. Hey, baby. Okay, the index of this, rational or of this radical function is implied to be a 2. Now, what you, what you need to remember is whenever the index is a 2, in order for the answer to this function to turn out to be real, whatever is under the radical, in this case, the quantity under the radical is x plus 5, in order for the final answer to this function to be a real, real valued function, meaning it gives, you, it gives you a real answer and you put in real numbers, you have to take what's under the radical and force it to be greater than or equal to zero. And the reason I'm doing that 
Think about it. If the quantity under the radical, if x plus 5 represented a number that was less than 0, if we took the square root of a negative quantity, we would get an imaginary answer, which is not real. So what we have to do is force the quantity under the radical to be greater than or equal to 0. So when someone asks you to find the domain of a function that involves a square root, you're going to go ahead and take the quantity under the radical and set up the inequality. Blah, blah is greater than or equal to 0. When I solve this, x is greater than or equal to negative 5. And if I wrote, well, if I drew that answer on a number line for you, bracket negative 5 and shade forever in this positive direction, well, positive, shade forever in, to the right, and of course, we're approaching, you know, we're hitting infinity. So in interval notation, my answer would be negative 5 bracket comma infinity. Now, if the index were an odd index, for example, you know, you pretty much commonly in our class we've dealt with index 2 or index 3. If the index were a 3, there would be no real restrictions for under the radical because you can take the cube root of a positive number, of a negative number, or of 0. So it's index 2 that in this course that we're mainly worried about. Okay, have a good day. Study, enjoy. Make sure you're ready for the final.